Lake Havasu can be one of the best lakes in the West and also one of the worst lakes in the West all at the same time. But if you're a tournament fisherman out here on the West Coast, you have to learn how to fish Lake Havasu, especially if you're fishing the Major League Fishing Toyota Series. For anybody new, my name is Matt Luna, and we are gonna be recapping my Lake Havasu event from the Major League Fishing Toyota Series. So we're gonna start off with day one of practice and go through the end of the tournament and kind of wrap everything up at the end. A bunch of baits are gonna be talked about and everything's gonna be linked down in the description of today's video. So make sure to check out the links, the discount codes, and the affiliate links that are down there. Please use those discount codes. Please use those affiliate links. Everything goes back to the channel and helps me get credit for any of the sales that may happen from this video. Before we get into day one, I just wanna talk about Waterland Fishing Optics. Waterland is my sunglasses sponsor. They make awesome polarized sunglasses. They have glass lenses and they have polycarbonate lenses. The spawn is just around the corner and if you fish around the spawn, you fish any tournaments in the spawn, you have to have a good pair of polarized sunglasses to see into the water to catch those bedfish. So head over to waterlandco.com and use my discount code LUNA15. I got a link down in the description of today's video as well, but the discount code for Waterland sunglasses is LUNA15. So this tournament took place in early Early February, I got there the last couple days of January and the tournament started the first couple days of February. So after I launched my boat on day one, I noticed the water temp was in the low 50s and even colder in some areas. Something that was interesting about day one is all the fish were in ambush locations. And I was throwing the jerk bait and I was just jerking along there and got a good large mouth. There was two leaves up on the side of the bank and then that fish was sitting off on that deeper break. Even when they were in those ambush locations, I had to throw the Alabama rig out there and I really had to give it action, whether that was rod tip jerks or with my way of reeling that bait in. Sometimes you gotta give them a couple hard cranks, just something to trigger those fish. I think that those fish are tracking that bait in the water and then once you give it that erratic retrieve, that erratic uh, rod movement, reel movement, it gets those fish to think that that bait's trying to get away from them and they automatically have that instinct and they just grab it and then you're able to catch that fish. So on day two of practice, I moved to a different part of the lake. Um, I don't wanna focus all my time in one area of the lake, so I wanna move around a little bit, but once I kinda of decide what area of the lake I think is gonna set up for me best, then I'm gonna focus my time on it. First thing in the morning, I catch a fish on a Six Sense Quake lipless bait. It was in a red color, which is you know common for this time of year. I had another bite on a jerk bait and it took me into a man-made structure, calm cages out there. Day two of practice was beautiful when it comes to the weather at the start of the day and most of the day for that matter. At the end of the day, things got crazy. Like literally it went from awesome, beautiful, warm to cold, windy, and literally crazy out there. I took water over the bow. It wasn't a very productive day, but I did find that quake bite, which is actually really good because that ends up translating into day three of practice and then actually into the event as well. So day three of practice is all about wind. The wind was crazy. A lot of people didn't even practice on day three. Um, it was just super, super windy. Had to battle the waves all the way up to where I was trying to fish. Catch one fish on the quake. That fish came off, but it was a big one. And it was in the small little cut. There was some grass down there. The thing just kicks my butt. It just runs out to shallow water, out towards me in the boat, and the fish just comes off. So I ended up catching another fish on a dual mold spinner bait that I make myself. It's the Ultra Minnow Spinner Jig Mold. Um, there's a wind blown bank. There's some brush in the water. I cast that spinner bait up. Erratic retrieves, once again, giving a lot of action to that spinner bait and get that large mouth to bite. It wasn't a giant, but it was fun to catch that fish. I knew it was one of those spots that was just kind of like that day. The wind was blowing up onto the bank. There was brush in the water. It was just too good to pass up. Threw that spinner bait up there, caught that fish. So if you recall, I talk about the jerk bait fish that I caught near those toolies, and it had that deeper spot along the bank. So I just look at my map, I find a point that has that same kind of structure. I run over to it, I start throwing the jerk bait. It's the deep diving provoke from Sixth Sense, and I end up getting another bite. Very similar type of structure. This time it was a small mouth. There wasn't those toolies around. A lot of times at Lake Havasu I noticed those toolies really house those large mouth and then some of those rocky structures are really where those small mouth are. So I'm working that jerk bait and then boom, I get a solid, you know, three, three and a half pound small mouth on that six inch jerk bait. So we have one more day of practice and it's the last day and it flat out sucked guys. I have zero content from that day because I literally caught zero fish out there. GCI Outdoor makes a lot of outdoor equipment, outdoor tables, outdoor chairs, outdoor stadium seats. So if you're going to those bleachers and need a stadium seat, GCI's got you covered. If you need camping chairs, camping tables, GCI's got you covered. They've given me an affiliate link this year. 
And if you go to check out the website, if you go to get any of the GCI Outdoor products, please use that affiliate link. I'm gonna link it down in the description of today's video. It's the only way that they're gonna know that I sent you and it gives me credit for those sales. GCI has been a great supporter of mine and I really encourage you guys to check out their products. They make awesome, awesome stuff. So now it's time to talk about the game plan that I had going into day one of this event. I was gonna to try to cover a lot of water because I didn't have a specific area where I felt like I could catch a bunch of fish and fill out a limit in one specific area. Fish some of that jerk bait stuff, fish some of the lipless crankbait stuff, and then also throw a jig. I didn't throw a jig a lot in practice, but it's something I love to throw at Lake Havasu. I typically get above average bites on the jig. I was just going down a long bank. I was trying to fish a point, but I just ended up fishing a nearby bank that leads out to a point. I'm throwing an underspin with a small swim bait on there, and then I catch a largemouth. It was just a scraper keeper largemouth, but we were on the board. The morning had been a tough, tough bite for me and I had no fish in the boat, so it was nice to get that small first largemouth in the boat. It kind of takes a little bit of pressure off, but you still have a long way to go. I fished around that same area for a little bit longer and didn't end up getting any bites, so then I moved over to a spot that I had fished a little bit in practice, didn't even get a bite, but it just looked right for what I like to throw a jig on. So I drove back over there and started fishing it. I was throwing a Dewalt Bolds football jig. It's the weedless football jig with holder mold. It's the one that I make myself. It's one of my favorite um, jigs that I make and um, I'm throwing that football jig and I'm going down that bank and I get bit and I swing, connect on it, get it to the boat. It's a nice three, three and a half pound smallmouth. I continue finishing that bank, but unfortunately I don't get any more fish in the boat. Right after that fish, I make, it's either my next cast or the one after that, and I do get a short strike on that jig again, but it doesn't eat it all the way, so I don't get to catch that fish. It could have been another three pound smallmouth because like I said, those jigs always seem to get above average bites for me, but it doesn't eat it all the way, don't get to catch that fish, so I'm still sitting at two. After getting those three bites pretty close together, the underspin fish and then those jig bites were pretty close in time. So I was like, okay, maybe the bite's turning on, maybe we're gonna be able to put this limit together, but unfortunately, it doesn't come to fruition and literally I come in to weigh in with two fish. I weighed a little over four pounds, wasn't completely out of it, but I had a lot of work to do going into day two. I was sitting in 59th place out of 85. There was literally 22 limits weighed by pros on day one of the tournament to just kind of give you an idea how tough the fishing was. My main goal for this season is to make the championship for the Major League Fishing Toyota Series out at Table Rock Lake. So I knew I needed to get as many points as I could. So another goal was to get that limit on day two. Day two ended up being much better. I got six or seven bites. All of them were on a jerk bait. And I think I had one jig bite that just didn't connect. So they obviously weren't eating the jig very well, but I did end up weighing a limit. And there was a little couple nuances that I noticed that really made day two different than day one. Now I didn't absolutely smash them. My limit was small. It was a little over 10 pounds, but like I said, limits go a long way. That 10 pounds is a dramatic improvement from my weight on day one, and it's definitely gonna boost me up in the standings, which is what I was trying to accomplish. Something that I realized on day two of this tournament was that I was not fishing the jerkbait correctly. In practice, I was able to give that jerkbait a lot of movement, bigger, harder jerks, and giving a lot of action to that bait. And those fish were committing to it, and they were eating it. I had to change things up to come tournament time and I just realized that because I sat in an area where I caught fish on the red lipless quake in practice so I knew that there was fish there and I was just gonna slow down and really kind of methodically fish it with the jerkbait because I'd already fished it with the quake and I didn't get bit so I threw that jerkbait in there and I gave it a lot slower a lot softer jerks and that's when I caught my first jerkbait fish and it made a big difference and I took that little piece of information that I learned on that fish and I translated it into my tournament day and that's what really keyed me in and gave me the ability to catch a limit on those jerkbait fish because I really changed how I fished it. I slowed it down, gave it a lot more subtle jerks, let it kind of sit there and I caught those fish. Had I realized that little difference in fishing the jerkbait, I think it would have made a tremendous difference in my difference in my tournament. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. If you don't make those adjustments fast enough, you're gonna bomb. If I would have made that adjustment on day one of the tournament, it would have dramatically improved my event. I definitely think those jerkbait fish were there to be caught, but I was fishing it wrong. I was giving it too much action and those fish just would not commit to it. So all said and done, I had a limit on day two and I ended up weighing a little over 10 pounds. I went from 59th place to 47th place, so I improved by 12 spots, which does make a difference when it comes down to making that championship. Could have done better, but definitely could have done worse. 
I don't want to say that I'm satisfied with my finish because I would have liked to have finished, you know, in that top 25 cash to check in this tournament. But having the bad day one that I did, being able to make an adjustment on day two, have that limit and improve and move up in the standings, I have to take that as a small victory. I am still learning out here. I'm learning to make these adjustments. Unfortunately, in this event, it just took me a little bit too long to make that adjustment, but I'm glad that I made it at some point because it did dramatically change my event. We talked about a bunch of different baits in today's video, so make sure to go check out the product list that I have down in the description of this video. A lot of discount codes, a lot of affiliate links, and like I said in the beginning of the video, guys, please use those discount codes, please use those affiliate links. It directly helps me out and helps out the channel. And guys, if you missed any of the Lake Havasu content, click on the video or the playlist that is on the screen right now, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.